Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hi, this is Joanne Victoria with another episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. This podcast helps you awaken your mind to clarity and success. I am fortunate to have many great guests, and today is no different. Actually, Angela M. Odom, O-D-O-M, is really special. She has written two books. One is called Bronco Strong, a memoir of the last deployed personnel services battalion, and she's a contributing author to Camouflaged Sisters. Leadership Through the Eyes of Senior Military Women. Angela Odom is a certified personal development coach, published author, and owner of the Better You Project, LLC, a personal leadership training company. Angela is a leadership developer with extensive high-stress international and graduate-level academic experience. Angela served honorably in the U.S. Army for 27 years and retired in the rank of colonel in September 2015. She served in various leadership roles, which include command and control of integrated male and female Army teams and units. Welcome to the show, Angela Odom. Oh, thank you. So happy to be here. I am grateful that you are here because you are my first named military guest colonel and yeah it is awesome because I'm I read a lot of books a lot of fiction and it's interesting that a lot of it it has to do with the military I don't know why I'm attracted to that Um, but I think it's about the strength of many of the people such as yourself and the leadership roles they take So I'm grateful that you are here today, and I want you to tell our audience, if you can, how you got here. What was your path as a little girl? Did you want to be in the in the army? Oh no, no, I did not. I um I grew up in in Mississippi, and uh, my mom my mom raised um well she raised six kids, and I simply I was a baby girl. I did not want to be a burden, and that was a whole point. So I. I I went to college and, you know, she said, hey, I can't help you. I can't pay you, babe. I can't help you with this. And so I was like, "Uh oh, I know I can't go back to her house because that would be failure. And that's not how she raised me. So uh, what I did was I went over to the ROTC department and I knew I was in relatively good shape and I was, uh, uh, you know, a good student. And I was blessed to get a three year Army ROTC, ROTC scholarship. However. What I didn't know was I should have read the contract. (laughs) (laughs) I thought I thought I would be in the reserve when I would, you know, go on a weekend, come back, you know, and uh, still hang out with my friends. And when it was time to graduate, uh, my um, my colonel, he said, look, you have already have a job. You're good. You, uh, you know, go out and do great things. I said, what are you talking about? (laughs) He said, he said, yeah, you're going on active duty. Mm-hmm. And you're going to do great. And, you know, the look on my face was, holy moly. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what happened. I, I had to uh, find a way to pay for college. I And um, so that was a reason I went in to the Army. I actually stayed because I loved it. Um, so two different reasons for joining the Army and then, of course, remaining in the Army so long. So how did you get to the point where you wrote your first book, Bronco Strong? Well, I, um, during my 27 years on active duty, I, um, I served in three separate combat environments. Uh, first was Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and then Cutter after 9-11 uh, when the Twin Towers were hit and the Pentagon um, was hit. Um, I went to Cutter, and then I was fortunate enough to be a battalion commander in Iraq. And the book itself, after I retired, it was just uh, something I had to do. So the book covers the third deployment uh, in Iraq. It was um, it was the fact that 
after six years, uh, we had come back after six years, each one of those soldiers at some point over that six year period had continued to reach out to me. It may have been, you know, their kid's birthday or they had a question about their career progression or they just wanted to say hello and keep that bond or they were hurting and I was the only one they wanted to reach out to for whatever reason. And so I felt compelled just to tell the story, the Bronco uh, Strong story. So you were their leader, if not certainly uh, emotionally and spiritually. Well, I was um, the face of the, of the battalion as the battalion commander. And we, um, we were very fortunate to have so many uh, leaders, so many uh, people willing to you know, work hard and sacrifice and do for others. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yes, I was a battalion commander. However, I was surrounded by, you know, so many great uh, leaders. So what is this source of success system that you have? Oh, yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, so what I found is through my, through my military career and then especially after I have retired is I've noticed a pattern. Uh, it is that most women undervalue themselves. And so what I... Um, what I was doing in the army and didn't even recognize it was helping them, women and men actually grow their personal leadership skills. And I just used a system for that. So SOAR, S-O-A-R, is a strategy. Um, S O is organized and A is, is uh, accountability and R is relationships. And it is, uh, the fact is, most people don't really know what they want. They've been told Hey, you're good at that. Try that. You should probably do this. And, you know, you, you, you go into a career for various reasons. And, and then you look up and like, well, wait, 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 is this what I really want to do? So SOAR, the system itself helps individuals, mostly women, figure out what they want to do. So do you work with women as a coach? I do. I do work uh, with um, individually and in group coaching settings on um, uh, online and in person. I have an upcoming uh, one-day workshop coming up. It's called Learn How to Lead, and we'll go through this uh, entire system. And at the end, uh, the women there will uh, come out with their own individual 90-day action plan based on the SOAR system. Yeah, I believe in plans myself. We all need a plan. Um, Talk a little bit more about your perspective and perceptions about women undervaluing themselves in our society today. I mean, we're in 2020 as far as I'm concerned, and we're still having issues, um, certainly having issues in leadership because it's changing slightly. It's, you know, not very, not so much the dictatorship aspect of leadership, but the relationship aspect of leadership and the servant leadership aspect of leadership. So how do you help these women who undervalue themselves become leaders? Well, the first thing is I help them understand that they are, that they do have um, leadership uh, skills. They have, um, I show them the approach that they're using, you know, Based on, uh, based on how they operate in their environment. Basically, I help them see, first of all, that the, um, the style that they use, and you just uh, alluded to some of those you know, types, uh, autocratic or servant leader or charismatic. And some, first of all, just identifying, oh, wait, I am a leader. Not necessarily am I in the position of authority. Mm-hmm. But I am someone who influences, influences others. And so first is the mindset. Most times I have, um, I've noticed that uh, women more so than men will question whether or not they can do a thing. And they might already have all the certifications. They're working, uh, you know, going in early, working late, and they are taking care of everybody along the way, Mm -hmm. not recognizing that they have the skill set and the ingenuity, the creativity to do the thing that they want, that that thing that's burning in them, they're like, uh, I don't think I could do that. Whereas um, 
a male may not necessarily see it that way. He he already knows he don't know how to do it, but still he's going to say, oh, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> That's just been, that's my observation. I don't I, know about everybody else. I, I totally agree. You know, I totally agree. That just, you know, that's just perfect. Yeah. Just so, absolutely perfect. So I think, a, a woman, a woman wants to make sure she has all the certification. She has, oh, I might need to go get some more experience. And so I help them to, you know, become the, the hero in their own story and help them put that cape on mm-hmm. and just just move out. Let's try it. We're going to take one step at a time. And so that's what, that's what I, that's what I mean by um, helping women who undervalue themselves. Just, just really just, um, they can see the truth that they have everything they need, you know, the support they need because they built the right relationships. They've been helping everybody, you know, uh, all the time. And so it's just a matter of, um, you know, setting up some accountability systems and getting themselves organized and, and the first thing is just developing a strategy to get from A to Z. Yes, women really need to work together more to make that happen. But if you cannot have a dozen women who are insecure try to make anything happen because it's not going to work, that's why they need you. <laughs> well, this this is, you know, if everybody's insecure, it's a problem. And then people attract who they already are. So if they're strong, they will attract strength. And if they're insecure or weak, they will attract the same thing. And they need to start attracting different people and then tap into their own strengths. Mm -hmm. So so based on what you're saying, um, women, with your help, can become leaders. Because there are people who insist that leaders are born not made. I don't agree with that, but um, what is your take on that? Oh, it, my, my thing is that, uh, first of all, leadership is genderless. It's not, it's not that you are a man or a woman, that you are an effective leader. It is that you have the skill set and you, um, you are able to influence uh, others to accomplish a thing. And so for me, when, um, when I am you know, talking to anyone, quite frankly, man, woman, boy, girl, uh, for me, I'm looking at the, uh, the leadership skills that I already have. And, and I'm going to serve you from the overflow. And that's what I teach uh, is, you know, just that whole thing of like when you're in the airplane and they tell you, you know, put your seat, belt, put your uh, mask on first before you assist others. With that concept, we're looking at what skills do you need what do you lack? What are you strong in? What are you not so strong in? Now let's get you let's get you uh, straight before you uh, continue to help everybody else, and then we're going to serve others from the overflow. So mm-hmm. that's that's how um, that's how I see it. I believe that we are actually um, that leaders are made, uh, not so much born, um, and I believe that uh, I believe that we just. We need to, uh, first of all, stop competing and start collaborating um, because we all have different strengths and weaknesses. So uh, it, it does nothing for me to, um, to one-up you or tear you down. It, it does nothing, absolutely nothing for me to do that. So I believe we all should just, what's the man said a long time, can we all just get along? Right. Well, I think it, it when they when they when women are competing, it's like high school. And I still think a lot of people live in that high school brain of when they're 15, 16, 17 or maybe even younger today that they are just trying to one up the next person and when women do this to each other, I I just sort of go, "Oh my god, why are they still doing that? It's just painful." Yeah, I don't participate. I don't play yeah. <laughs> either. I can't be bothered. Right. Uh, I would, depending upon the situation, I would certainly uh, consider coming to someone's defense. But de- if it's online, I stay away from the whole thing because mm-hmm. you can say the wrong word and it sticks with you for the next 25 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't, if you can't work together, that's what it's all about, working together. And I think that, you know, I certainly like when you said leadership is genderless, lordy. Mm-hmm. 
It is. It is. And so we have um, we have uh, messages that are, um, you know, sent to us, provided to us, care of, uh, you know, other people, our society norms. And so we sometimes buy into that, that, oh, only a tall person can do this or only, uh, you know, a, a male could do this or this is for women. And for me, I'm just like, that's a bunch of hogwash. <laughs> well, it's also it's just so limiting. Yes, 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 yes. You know, to the, these labels that people put on others, which is really prevalent today. You know, the labeling has just gotten out of hand. Mm-hmm. And I choose to ignore it. I don't watch the news. I don't read the news. Um, certainly some of it see- seeps through. But I choose to stay in the Buddhist way as much equanimity as possible. Just even. Try to be as even as possible. Not reactive. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to be healthier to do that. Mm-hmm. So tell me about Camouflaged Sisters, Leadership Through the Eyes of the Senior Military Women Leaders, and how what your contrib- con- contribution was to that. Was it a chapter? Oh yes, yes, yes. So first of all, Camouflage Sisters is a is a brand. It's a movement. Uh, this is um, the fifth book in this series, and it mm-hmm. is military women of all ranks, all uh, backgrounds. Uh, so the um, the actual uh, founder of this organization is Lila Holly, and uh, for me, uh, she invited me to participate in uh, Camouflage Sisters Leadership through the eyes of senior military women leaders. I wrote one chapter and it is, um, we have 12 authors, co-authors. The title of my chapter is Beyond Competence. And, uh, you know, we can have the whole premise of that is, is uh, we want to assume, we would assume that you are competent, but it takes more than competence to be an effective leader, to be someone uh, of influence, to be someone who's going to provide resources and support to, uh, to others. So how do you help someone do that? To become someone of influence, does that go back to SOAR? Well, actually, uh, so for me, the definition, you know, I always want to start with the definition so that we're not talking past one another. Correct. And so when we look at leadership, my personal definition of leadership is uh, uh, that leadership is a process uh, of influencing others to attain um, goals and uh, tasks. So it's a process of influencing others. And so when we when we talk about uh, beyond beyond competence and becoming a person that is um, that is able to influence, which means in my mind to lead mm-hmm. others, then there's other qualities to uh, consider whether or not I will trust you enough to allow you to lead me and guide me. It takes, mm-hmm. it takes more than your certifications or your, um, your academic. Uh, Correct. Experience. And so that is beyond competence. I need to trust you first. So trust is the issue. Trust is uh, trust for me. And, and most, most military people I know, um, it's everything. Well, without trust, you could die in the military. Well, I suppose you could die anywhere. <laughs> anywhere, that's true. But in, in the context of you, yes. you know, it's like you, you, your life was at stake on many occasions, I'm sure, so that you had to trust your senior people and also your compatriots to do what they said they were going to do so that you could come through the tunnel and get out the other side. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Trust, trust is everything. Okay. So, and then since a lot of women don't trust themselves, let alone each other, this, you have some challenges I would imagine from time to time. Yeah, we do. We all do. And so I think, um, uh, for, for me working with, um, Working with women, what I find is, you know, we start with a conversation to uh, to just find out, first of all, what do you want? Um, not what you don't want, not what your mom wants for you, your husband says it's good for you, or your or your bestie thinks you'll be good at. But uh, let's just figure out what you want. And then, oh, by the way, how do you show up 
in the world, in your workspace, in your social environment. And we just start to peel that thing back and, and determine, you know, the strategy, how we're going to, um, how am I going to support that particular woman to get what she wants? Yeah, for me, the bottom line question is always, what do you want? Because most people don't know what they want. And they, you know, go a little frenetic hither and yon to little things. But when you first said, ask the question, what do you want? Not what you don't want. And I think a lot of people, men and women alike, but primarily women because of the lack of confidence, um, always turn to the downsides. What don't I, what I don't want is X Mm -hmm. as opposed to what I do want is a, Mm -hmm. God forbid we should get that first. Yeah, that would be, that would be fantastic. So, (laughs) (laughs) um, it would be, I, I, I just hope that it happens sooner rather than later. So how do you deal with resistance? Even though somebody is in your group, and there's always going, you know, every group represents every other group. I mean, there's always a, a, fac- a fraction of people. If you have 10 people in your group, that entire group has all the emotions of one human being. So you're going to have from extremes, A to Z, the positive and the negative in one group. How do you deal with resistance from women who you know, let you know verbally or non-verbally that they either cannot or are unwilling to move forward and trust themselves. For for me, you know, when I was in the Army, we always looked at shared values, uh, the shared goals, shared objectives. And so for a group of people, if it is uh, we are seeking uh, a shared objective or a shared goal, then that's where we, that's where we start. If it is an individual who is um, who is not pulling their weight, <laughs> then that is a different way to um, you know to engage with that person. But as I have uh, you know began to work with individuals in a coaching capacity, if a person is working with me and they are paying me and mm-hmm. they are resistant, then perhaps um, you know we need a reality check and, a, and have one of those uh, you know just a uh, a talk and say, okay, is this really, is this really happening? Mm-hmm. You're, you're paying me to do nothing. <laughs> oh, I understand. Yeah. I, I, I warn people ahead of time that, you know, I'm not going to put up with crap. And if they say they want X, we will get there, but it might be a little bit of hell along the way. And, um, I'm probably exaggerating, but maybe for the show, it's not so much of an exaggeration. You know, it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be you know pansy like it's going to be work people don't like that's what I find that is difficult with some people is they don't really like to work I think for me um when I'm uh, getting resistance sometimes it's fear of course the unknown always it is the other part of this I've never done it this way or I don't know um, I don't know if I can do it. So sometimes it's just fear. And so we have to work through, um, you know, what the limitations that person may have set on themselves. And it starts, I think, with a conversation. And um, again, just uh, making sure, making sure that we eliminate um, all the things that they don't want or all the things that might be holding them back. And sometimes that is the people in their lives who are pouring foolishness into them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, well, that's so a good just, one. Foolishness. That's a good one. So we just have to recognize, we have to recognize uh, what the person has placed on themselves as a limit and, uh, you know, help them to see that. So I just work with, um, I work with women to, you know, to help them uh, most want to get promoted or to progress in their career, or they simply want to thrive in their social environment. So it is, um, it is my job to help them identify, first of all, what they want, and then we, we can move from there. And sometimes, sometimes that, takes, that takes a minute, and that's okay. I know. You, know, you, you just know that it's going to happen, but you, the other people have to see it for themselves. Yes. 
creating new neural pathways, new ways of thinking and new ways of acting can sometimes take a little bit of time. So how can people find you, Angela? Oh, they can definitely go to uh, AngelaOdom.com and learn more about me. And um, I'm on I'm on Instagram and Facebook and uh, Twitter. And on, on Facebook, it is Angela M. Odom. Uh, that's pretty simple right there. And um, on Twitter is Angela M. Odom, <laughs> same thing. And on uh, Instagram, it is uh, underscore the Better You Project. There we go, everybody. I am grateful that Angela M. Odom and all of her experience has been here today to talk about women in leadership, how they can do it how they can work with Angela through her SOAR success system and reach Angela at AngelaOdom.com. And if you want to talk to Angela immediately, you can email her at info at the better up project.com. The better you project. The better. Oh, there we go. See, there it is. One thing runs into the other, the better you project.com. That's better, B-E-T-T-E-R-U, the word, the letter U, uproject.com. I hope I haven't screwed up too much. So remember, Angela helps women who undervalue themselves. And since a lot of you are listening out there, um, please re-listen to this podcast because I'm sure you missed some information because there's just a lot in here and Angela has provided you with many ways to take that next step, including contacting her. I want to thank Angela for being here today. And go to uh, her Apple link that will be on my website and give her a rave review. You can also go to my website at askjoannevictoria.com and you can get a free book called The True Self Handbook, a guide to uh, expand your life. And you can get it, also get a free report, Five Steps to Life Work Harmony. And I hope everybody has a great and wonderful day. Thank you again, Angela. Oh, thank you so much. It's been great. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts. Check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.